Hello, hello. Welcome to this week's podcast. We are talking today to a friend of mine, a colleague of mine, and somebody who's actually one of my mentors, also Jen Lehner. Now, what Jen and I will be talking about today is a concept I've brought up before. I talk all the time about how important it is to get help in your business, uh, to have a virtual assistant or some kind of assistant to keep you out of the uh, the lunacy of creating content because it just feels like this endless churn and like the content monster just wants more and more and more. So I've talked to you about the importance of that before, but I have not talked to you with an expert who is going to talk about how to really make this happen. And she's going to tell you what she teaches people. And I have learned from her personally, it's how I hired my people. And so I just want to introduce you to Jen Lehner. Hi, Jen Lehner. Hey, Jen Liddy. It is so good to be here. Good to be here too. And good to be here with you. Jen is a digital marketing and systems strategist. And I wanted to bring her on because um, uh, when you join Jen's programs, you are just kind of blown away with the efficiency that she performs at and what she is able to provide to her clients. I'm in her, what she calls a private mastermind, the front row VIP. I'm going to have Jen talk about the front row and what that means to be in the front row. And she basically teaches people all the things about strategy uh, for being an online business, everything from social media to strategic outsourcing, which is what we're going to talk about today. So just know that we are in the company of a, of a really useful expert. And so I'm excited to dive in. Thanks, Jen. Hey, it's better than being a useful idiot. So great. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've got, an, we've got an incredible expert. So Jen, can you talk to us a little bit about, first of all, what does Front Row VIP mean to you and how, how do you approach your business in that way? Um, well, the whole concept of Front Row is just um, how I, I realized after I, I sort of coined that term in my business, how I've approached my whole life that way. And I think there's certain people that always sit in the front of the class um, some other people might find that annoying, um, where the hand constantly is up, but you know, and, and, and you're participating, but, but, um, I tried not to be annoying, but, but it's, it, it really is just a metaphor, uh, to say that life is really too short to take a back seat. And so it's up to us to claim our spot on the front row, whether it's in a class or a concert, if you can get there, because it's just your way of saying like, I'm all in, you know, and I'm okay to be seen and I'm okay for, I'm, and I want to see, I want to, you know, when you're in the front, right? Like just literally in the front, you see things more clearly, you hear things more clearly, um, and you, you see it first. And so, um, so I just think that's a pretty awesome way to live life, you know, um, and, and that's it. So in business, it's the same thing. It's the concept of like, um, you know, going for it really. Yeah. You've talked in other venues about how you've gone to conferences and because of where you're sitting, it really was strategic in terms of who you got to meet and the experiences that you've had. So I think that, you know, I always try to think of being in the front row. I'm a nerdy person, so I'm often in the front row. Uh, but I know that a lot of people will choose to sit in the back, but you're, you're always encouraging us to um, do it your way and be in the front row so that you can see and be seen. Yeah, absolutely. And, and regarding the conferences, it is strategic because yeah. it's just so funny when you do that, it turns out that people on either side of you end up being real go-getters, movers mm -hmm. and shakers, and they're interesting people yes. and you know they're interesting they're interested they're curious like those are the people i want to be around you know and then <laughs> yes. surround yourself with those people and like great things start to happen so yeah thanks for asking about that i, yeah. I love to to share that message well, i'd like to have everybody know the philosophy of the person that we're talking with today um we are talking specifically about your program front row CEO and what that program does. I know you've got, you know, a lot of trainings before people get into your program, but mm -hmm. the front row CEO is in my view, as somebody who's taken it, a way to finally step into the CEO um, seat in your business and stop mm -hmm. doing all of the work that's keeping you from growing your business. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about the CE, the front row CEO program and how everything that you teach kind of leads people to the front row CEO program. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's sort of the whole thing sort of happened by accident because as I was building my own business, um, I was in business for two years. Like now I look back and I'm like, wow, I wish I would have hired someone from the very beginning, which mm -hmm. we could talk about. We can follow up with that later. If you want that 
because I know that sounds kind of crazy and controversial, but really and truly, I wish I would have hired someone in the beginning. And then when I hired someone, everyone noticed that um, like I just shot up like a rocket ship in terms of, you know, my visibility, but also what I was offering and all the things I had going on, right? And, and the things that I built. And so people noticed and they were like, what in the world? are you doing that you have grown so quickly and, and, and the, you know, you're all over the place. And um, I was like, I hired someone. So people were like, well, tell us, tell us, how did you do that? And what, you know, and so I, I started to develop that. And, um, and that person that I hired is still with me today, all these years later, I've been in business 10 years now. And, um, and, and we've grown beyond, you know, just the one person, but basically um, the, it's based on the, the notion, like you said, that you, if you do all the things in your business, if you do all the admin things in your business, you are not a coach, you are not a lawyer, you are not whatever you are. That's not what you are. You are what you do. So you, you're an administrative, you're an administrator, you're an administrative assistant. Right. And that's just a fact, right? Like you, we can put our titles all over the place, but what are you actually doing? Mm -hmm. And so we all know in this online space and creating content and trying to put together a course and just if you're a coach, like downloading a Zoom call and getting the show notes, that could take half the day. Really? So, so if I, right. And if, if I'm doing that half the day and then God forbid, there's some sort of like dysfunction with forwarding my URL domain, even <laughs> to this day, I have to like relearn that every time. I mean, I don't anymore, but like, I would have to if, if when the, when when you get the four hundred four message or whatever, um, and then the whole day is gone, right? And so, it's just really simple math. If somebody else is doing that stuff for you, then guess what you get to do? You get to do the stuff that actually moves the needle. That actually is what you came into your business to do: to serve people, to help people, to you know, uh, develop your talents further. Like it's all those things um, that you just cannot do. You can't do, you can't reach out to get the speaking gigs and you can't really make the, the, if there's certain sales calls that only you can make, you don't have time to do that if you're bogged down. So that's the, okay, I don't, not to beat a dead horse, but like it is so obvious. And yet some of us still think, well, I'm just going to keep doing myself because number one, how am I going to explain what's in my, how am I going to explain my business? It's all in my head. Yes. Like I got a hot mess of going on over here, right? <laughs> I got kind of Dropbox, <laughs> Google, it is. And people, and you know, what I hope people take away from our conversation, if nothing else is to know that you are so not alone. And actually, you know, now that I've had hundreds of people go through this program, you are the norm. You are mm -hmm. the norm. Okay. Even those people that you think are just really killing it um, in your eyes, you know, if they, when they started before they had help, they were exactly where you, where you feel like you are. Maybe, you know, they had a mess too, and they might still have some tangles. I mean, we all do. So, um, basically it really starts. So then it's like, well, Jen, I don't, I believe what you say. I'm buying into what you're saying. Like, okay, okay. You know, I need help, but how do I even go about that? So it's really critical to, um, well, I'll tell you like the main objections are like, how do I go about doing that? I wouldn't even know where to start. Um, how much does it cost? Uh, yeah. And how much is it going to cost me? Because I can't afford it. I'm barely breaking even in my business or what is really typical for, for a lot of folks is just the feast or famine. We launch, we don't launch anymore. We're, and then we're thinking about the next thing. What are we going to do next? And then, you know, we get a peak, we get a few new clients and, and on and on it goes. Um, and we just don't feel like we're profitable enough or it's scary to think that you have to show up like that now for somebody else. Like now somebody else is kind of depending on you to, to steer the ship. And that can be really um, kind of a little bit daunting, you know, for folks. So I have answers for all of those questions. Yeah. That's what I want to talk about today, because I think that people buy into the fact that given how many platforms there are for content and even with, help like AI, you know, chat GPT, all of these helpers, we still are overwhelmed. And so I think people buy in, right? But then there's all of these logistical questions. The first thing I want to say is that when I realized that my assistant could do shit faster than I could, 
and it like it wasn't going to take her three hours. I didn't have to pay her for three hours mm -hmm. with the same thing. That was like the first objection for me. And then a lot of the questions you raise are like, okay, how? And is there any insights that you can give us on the podcast to help us understand like this isn't as scary and overwhelming as everybody thinks it is? Yeah. I mean, I would say that if a lot of people have they come back to me and they're like, look, I've done this before and it was a nightmare and it was more trouble than it was worth. And in the end, I said to myself, if this is what it's like, I'm, I'm, I am might as well just do it myself. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is a sickness. Okay. <laughs> that we all, <laughs> it, it is, it's, it's, we do that. I okay. Know, but this so is, true. this is not true. This is a lie that you are telling yourself. The is this reason... the same lie that like, I should fold my own laundry rather than have my teenager do it because I do it better. And he, then I don't want to teach him. Is it along the same lines as that? Same. <laughs> the, the exact same. Yes. Ding, yes. Ding. You know, I, you, I'll tell you how I dealt with that one. I got buckets that fit on the shelf in the closet mm -hmm. and I label them like underwear, jeans, shorts, whatever. Mm -hmm. So when they put the laundry, it didn't matter that he stuck it in there in a ball, <laughs> right? Because you couldn't see it. So yes, yes. it kept it very neat. So that had a, that's my, that was my systematic solution to that little, <laughs> t you know, bo two boys nightmare. Okay. With the laundry. Um, yeah. So it, it's it, basically the problem is this, is that everybody has, pro everybody who's ever tried to hire has, gone through the frustration of posting your ad and then you get a whole bunch of responses. Sometimes depending on where you posted the ad, you might get uh, upwards of 150 responses. So then there's the time to weed through all of that. And 80% is garbage, totally. garbage in that they didn't even read what you said. They're nowhere near it. They, you know, like they, they don't even fit the bill at all. They did not read your your thing. So, but you still have to spend the time pro filtering through there. So what I tried to address was like for every person who joins my program is in the same place, which is they're losing their mind because they are so busy and I can't make this process. Um, I can't make the trainings take longer than five minutes mm -hmm. and I can't make the steps be like, you know, ridiculously long. So it was like, huh, how am I going to do this? So it was like kind of semi-automated, as automated as it can be. And that's what ended up happening was I created literally, as you know, it is a machine and it is like you, you, you step into the machine and you just do what I tell you to do. And I'll just say broadly that it's a very, very um, strict filtering uh, process. Okay. You're vetting the people in a way that really touches on everything you need to filter out the wrong candidates and to focus on the right candidates so that after you go through this little machine, by the time they get into an interview with you, you've weeded out anybody who, who, who wouldn't be qualified and you're left with like really outstanding candidates from there, mm -hmm. a huge part of, of the program uh, and what I teach is that you take those people, okay, let's say up to between five and 10, I've had someone do this with as many as 10, because they were looking for several VAs, and you put them into a trial, a paid trial week. This is where the magic happens, because we all know in an interview, like both, you know, I've been on both sides of the interview, right? We all have. And so it's very easy to nail an interview um, and be charming and wonderful. But really, the magic happens in that trial week. Yeah. And I can't tell you how many times I've interviewed someone and been like, wow, they are perfect. I, they're just amazing. I know they're going to be the one. And then we go into the trial work week, and it's not the person that was so charming and wonderful on the, in the interview. It was the quiet introvert, the, the, the person who she was super shy. And I had to just keep pulling mm -hmm. word, you know, answers out of her. And I was just, it was so, it was a very awkward interview. We get to the trial week. Oh my gosh, she slays, right? Like, <laughs> she, like okay then. So super important. And, um, and, and so, yeah, so, so that trial week is really like, is really crucial. And then we have some very specific in that vetting process, we have some uh, very specific like test tasks and assignments that we give along the way. So, you know, combining those two things um, helps you find at the end, your, what I call your perfect match virtual assistant. And this is someone we hope you're going to be with for years, right? Not, not the touch and go and, and the beauty, um, not touch and go, but not the, 
you know, revolving door. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then the beauty of this is when, after you do this, I say, you really only have to do it once because one of the first things you'll do is teach your perfect match virtual assistant how to use the machine. Mm -hmm. And when you need to add to your team, your VA will be the one that runs 99.9% .9 of that process. You will probably just show up for the interview. Mm -hmm. um, and that's about, you know, that's about it. But let's go back to affordability. Um, do you want to jump in since I've just grabbed the microphone and like, no, I'm really happy to have you not... talk. I wanted, I wanted to say one thing. Um, you start at the beginning of that section that, you know, it's a machine. And if you do what I tell you to do, <clears throat> it's actually going to be a lot easier for you. And I want people to understand, like when, when I teach content, I'm going to teach, like, we, we have to make this your own. You have to find your voice. We have to find your way. When you want to do what Jen is talking about, hire somebody for your business to grow with your business, this is not the time for you to become a critical thinker and have to synthesize a whole <laughs> bunch of shit out there. Like, this is the time for you to, right. like, she's got the system, she's perfected the system. And so far, what you've learned is, <clears throat> excuse me, you have to vet in a, in a really clear way. And you have to try in real life by paying them and having them do tasks. And though that's really, it's not just about the interview. So this is what I guess I want people to first understand. Like, it's not just about having great interview questions. It's not. Heck no. Gosh, so much more than that, really. <clears throat> okay. So yes, let's go back to the problem of, I need to hire now. I'm not quite ready because I can't afford it. What am I doing? Okay. So this system, we're doing the how, can I afford it part, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so this, this system that I have will really work hiring a virtual assistant anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and we have used it to hire locally here in the U S but primarily, um, we have hired in the Philippines and there's a number of reasons for that. But the number one obvious reason is that when you outsource to the Philippines, you can leverage exchange rates. Mm. And so the trial week starts at about $5 an hour. So before anybody faints or says, oh, you know, that's exploitation and all of that, because believe me, I have heard it all. I want to be really clear about something. We do not teach exploitation. I do not talk about where this is not about finding the cheapest person that you can find. And in fact, when you go through those first vetting pieces, you ask people, what do they want to get paid? Mm -hmm. So they tell you, you would be shocked to see that some people will ask for like three dollars an hour we do not recommend that at all and you'll see that what ends up happening is that yeah you might start at five dollars an hour and this is why this is so beautiful is that you could start someone at five dollars an hour and afford them for 40 hours a week okay and really if you can't afford five dollars 40 hours a week then you know, maybe you're not fully in business yet and that's fine, right? Mm -hmm. Like maybe we're, you know, but let's, but that's $200 a week, mm -hmm. right? For someone working for you full time. So number one, um, as soon as you know that you have the right person, we encourage you to go to a salary model where you say, I'm going to pay you for 40 hours a week, even if you work like 30, right? Mm -hmm. Because just having that perfect match virtual assistant with you, who's going to be with you for years, who's going to help you grow your business, you know, think about it. Like they feel really like they don't have to go hunt down other clients anymore. They get to have a laser focus on you and your, um, your business. That's the part of, that's part of the, of the formula, right? For really growing this tr true partnership. Okay. That's number one. Number two, it really ends up being more than $5 an hour because another thing we encourage is profit sharing in the form mm -hmm. of like, let's say you have a launch or, um, you know, a new product launch or, you know, you're relaunching something, whatever you're, you've got a new campaign and you, you say, all right, guys, to your team, we've got, um, here's our good, better, and our best, our stretch goal. And like, if we reach certain goals, you know, everybody's going to get rewarded for that. You don't even have to say what the amount is. I like to really blow my team away. When we hit a stretch, stretch goal, I want them to fall off their chair with mm -hmm. how generous my offer is. Because if I have a launch and it makes $100,000, what is it to me to hand someone five grand? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, what they made it happen or more, right? Like what? And so- 
when you give these kind of bonuses and, um, and then incremental raises as well, the beauty is that you're growing and they're growing, but, and this is kind of the only way. And that's why it's so fast, Jen, because we, it's cost prohibitive to hire someone at $50 an hour, mm -hmm. you know, when you're in the early stages of your business or a hundred dollars an hour or even $25 an hour, because you can't get that momentum because you wouldn't be able to afford that person for 40 hours a week or even 20 hours a week. Right. So now by starting together at this low rate, then, and let's say you do 20 hours a week. Okay. So it's a hundred dollars a week that you're spending. You've got this person and they've taken over all the stuff you don't want to do anymore. You never have to look at it again. You never have to do your show notes again. <laughs> oh my gosh. What is that? What is that worth to you? Right. You know what I mean? Just the peace of mind that comes from that. So that you're growing and they're growing right alongside with you and watch how fast um, a beautiful relationship is born. And, and, and then the last thing I want to say about affordability and specifically in the Philippines and, and sort of how that plays out, that is a living wage in the Philippines. And I have, um, if you want to, I can give it to you for your show notes, Jen, but we've got this, um, new breakdown, of, like a, we have, I have my team do the research for this. And I was like, look, I need this to be, this has to be I don't want this to be fluff. I want these to be real numbers. And guess what? If it comes back that our hypothesis is is false, then we'll change it. Like we'll we'll change the amount and we'll start telling a different story. But they went and they they did real um they they went and and did a deep dive of re in, in in their research to see like how much does it cost an average family uh for their mortgage, for education, for food. Uh they even put in there like a two 25 kilogram bag of rice, um, uh, health costs, all of that. And at the end, at $5 an hour, there was like 2,632 pesos left over. They tried to include everything you could think of for living expenses. Now, 2,000 some odd pesos is nothing. So I'm not saying that like they're just saving loads of money, but they're able, but, but this is, this is, a livable wage. And then again, it really ends up being more than that. If you follow my system for the bonuses and the profit sharing. Yeah. But so I have to say all of that in the same breath, because when you tell someone $5 an hour there, it's shocking and it's, and, 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 and they worry, right? Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. wow, is that fair? And, um, and, then, right, and, right. and then another pushback <clears throat> that we get every once in a while, especially when I launch the program, every once in a while, I'll get some angry email from someone that says, <laughs> Well, I just want to, I, I think it's terrible that you're sending jobs overseas for that VAs here in the United States could, yep. could be filling. And first of all, my response has always been, even before I did this VA stuff was people are people. I'm all right with the whole global economy thing, but that's just me. But even if I was like super all about local economy, guess what? If I would have kept going the way I was going those first two years of my business, I wouldn't be in business right now. I'm standing right now talking to you in a local office building. I have an office in an office building. So I'm paying the guy who owns this building a monthly rent. Mm -hmm. um, I get videos produced at a local video, video story, like um, a video space um, whenever I need to do promotional videos. Uh, you know, I've got a local printer. I, I spend plenty of money locally because I was able to do that by growing my business with the help of someone overseas. So like everybody wins, point, yeah. you're not helping your local economy. If you go out of business, right. that's the, that's the bottom line. That's what I was going to say. So, so should you just go out of business because you can't keep up? I love the, I love, this is so typical of Jen. She has done her research. Every time I get on a call with Jen, she has done all the research and she has mapped it all out. So that is one of, that is really why I wanted to talk to you because it's not just airy fairy or this theory that you have. It is really a, you teach people a system, but even if people don't buy your system, even just shifting their mindset about what you've brought up today. And even just if they could put into place a better vetting system for themselves, yes, that alone would be gold takeaway from this from this podcast interview. Um, one of, one of the other things I wanted to ask you, since you are such an expert about hiring um, VAs from the Philippines, is how do you know that it's safe and how do you like pay them and is it harder than working with somebody in the U.S.? Oh no, it's so easy. So. 
We, um, a couple of things, like you're not really hiring an employee. So tax wise, they're not even a 1099. It's a business expense, but they don't, you don't have to submit a 1099 for your, for your VAs. So that means because, and they're not an employee. And so you don't, you're not required to pay health benefits or medical leave or any of that. Um, and then just paying them, we, I use PayPal, but there's, there's a lot of very easy, um, uh, pay, uh, payment services that, that are super easy, um, and convenient safety wise. You know, what I always say is like, you don't know that the person you hire in your local town who comes into your office, isn't going to be some sort of thief. Um, <laughs> I mean, you really, you just, you don't know. Right. right but, right. um, I can tell you that in all the time I've been doing this, and all the people and all the hundreds of VAs who have gone, who've been hired, I've never had one person come back to me and say, Jen, um, you know, someone stole from me or they, they hacked my account or whatever thing you conjure up in your head is dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, but the beauty is I show you software that is in place that does protect you mm -hmm. um, because it is important, right? Like to protect your passwords and all that. So they never see your passwords and, right. and so forth. So um, yeah. And then what else? No, I just really wanted to know about, well, the safety, you, you address both of them, the safety and the ACA. Yeah, okay. One question I have is why uh, VAs from the Philippines specifically, how did that come to be? Oh, well, I lived in the Philippines as a kid for two years, and then I went back as an exchange student. And, um, you know, it's, it, first of all, like as an, as a, as the CEO of my business, one thing I love about the, the Philippines, well, first of all, I love the Philippines, because that's number one. Number two, education is super um important there and so truly english is almost the first language and that they learn it from kindergarten all the way through college mm -hmm. so um so most everybody is fluent in english um secondly when you interview these vas that you know with my vetting process by the time you get to the interview and even before that the people who are in the in your funnel they they don't just have bachelor's degrees. Many of them have advanced degrees. Mine okay. So they're very educated, <laughs> very <laughs> educated. Mine went to medical school. Yeah. Okay. So I tell people that all the time. They don't believe me. That is, <laughs> thank you. Um, we have had pharmacists, doctors, lawyers, engineers, um, people are super highly qualified. Um, and I would also say um, one of the beautiful qualities about the, the, the people in the Philippines is that um, it's really a tradition. There's still, even with the infiltration of modern media and, you know, Amer Western media and all of that stuff, still like really traditional in that, like they really respect their elders. And like, when you meet an older person in the Philippines, um, you kiss their hand and, you know, we have a different outlook on old people here, right? Like we don't, we're not the same. And, and, and I only say that because it just gives you insight into just the collective kindness, if you could, if you will, like, I, I, I think there's such a thing, you know, like they are kind and they are loyal. Um, and they, um, it's also a religious country. You know, I'm not a religious person, but people there are very religious. And again, I'm talking with, I'm, you know, I'm using a big brush, sure, right? Like, yeah. you know, but I'm just saying, generally speaking, these are the I've things also, about the Philippines. Yeah. I've also found uh, my VAs from the Philippines to be incredibly hardworking. They have a very yes. similar work ethic to the American work ethic. For good yeah, very much so. <laughs> very much so. Yeah. Very hardworking. Well, the one thing I wanted to shift into is you've given us a ton of insights about, you know, the mindset needed to finally hire somebody, uh, some of the little tactical things to think about to make it easier for you. But when it comes to creating content, well, I know that a VA can do a million things and you've done a really good job of elucidating that for your clients. Um, but how can that specifically help us with our content? You did mention, for example, show notes, right? That would be one of the ways when a, when a VA learns your voice, they can really kind of take over. What are some of the other things a VA can do to help you with your content? Well, gosh, you know, you mentioned chat GPT. It's been a game changer for my team because, <clears throat> um, uh, sometimes where I might be still be the bottleneck is when a piece of content gets created by my team, I still need to review it. So now I, they take that content and they put it in chat GPT and say, how can I word this better? Or how can I make this sound more American? Mm -hmm. uh, because that is something um, where, although they're fluent, 
they use phrases that we don't, they're actually more formal in so many ways than we are. Right. Yeah. So one of my favorite examples is, um, and, uh, we just sent out one of these emails the other day and it's fine. I think it sounds kind of cool, but, um, one of my VAs said like, you know, dear Teresa, um, since you already availed the offer of blah, 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 which is grammatically correct. It's fine. Grammar check wouldn't pick it up, right. but it's just, we don't say that, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so chat B, G, G, chat GPT, you know, um, kicks that, uh, kicks it back and it's just been great. Yeah. I mean, I, the improvement has been amazing, but, um, so actually creating content, there's many VAs who actually write blogs and, um, can do the blurbs for social media posts and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, also like sending out one of those, we send out a, uh, a newsletter for my, my private mastermind every Friday that has a template of like, you know, stuff that happened this week, um, the news in, in tech and marketing, um, and just any, any highlights that have, it, that have happened, stuff I want them to see. And then a lesson for the week mm -hmm. that we pull from our vault that they, we think our members might find helpful, helpful. Well, I, they do a hundred percent of that. Like it's a roundup email. It's a roundup email. Um, and, uh, what else? You, um, we have another thing that was created by my VAs, one of my best pieces of content. It is, um, we, we give it as a, a holiday gift every year and it's tools and resources that every small business owner or entrepreneur needs or something like that. I don't remember the title. Um, and so we have been keeping track of, of, of all of this stuff and we link it in this very beefy guide of like linked uh, and organized stuff, like where to find the best free um, uh, royalty free audio mm -hmm. or, you know, certain kinds of clip art, you know, whatever. Um, but they, they compile that. And so when, when it comes to the end of the year, they just make a beautiful cover and we have this really valuable freebie. Um, they obviously, you know, can process all of your videos um, and then repurpose them a million different ways that I know you teach your teacher people, you know, different ways of repurposing um, that I would never, ever have time to do. Uh, gosh, they just do everything with it's the kind garden. Of endless, right? Part of me. It's kind of endless. How, endless. Endless. I mean, really, I, I just, the, the, the thing that I want people to know is that as the CEO, um, your content is oftentimes the thing that you do need to be doing, right? You getting up on stage and delivering your, your TED talk, your, your message, right? You on your podcast, you on your, on your, on your vlog, um, those, those things you should be showing up for. But I like to just, to, to just say proverbially, all, or, you know, as a metaphor, all you should be doing though, is hitting record, whatever hit record means for you. That might be pen to paper, writing out, you know, a short story, wh whatever that is, but everything after that is your VA. You don't touch it after that because you have systems in place for them to take it everywhere it needs to go until the time that it's published and then even beyond. I love that. Jen, how can people get into your world? I know that you're opening the doors to Front Row CEO, and I know that you have some great trainings that people will find valuable before those doors open. How can people find you? Um, the best thing to do, well, um, so that we have a, I don't know when this is going to publish, but we do have a, a masterclass that's starting on February the 6th. Yep, this and you can put right the link. that. Pardon me? We're It'll be right before, right that? before that. Yeah. Okay, great. So you'll have the link for that and you can just put that in the show notes okay. and then you can go to jenlaner.com forward. No, just jenlaner.com. Okay. And, um, and then, or to my YouTube channel, there's a million videos. Um, and I'll give you the, the link. Yeah. For that. Those but, links yeah. would be great. And I'll put those in the show notes because I really think getting to know somebody before you work with them is really important. So if you're interested in hiring a VA and everything Jen said today is making sense to you and you're like, Oh my God, it's time. And this is my year. This is the program that you want to be part of. And even if you don't join Jen's program, you want to be in her world because she's, she's just so incredibly useful and helpful. Um, and she's really systematic. So if you're a person whose brain is like thinking in a million different atmospheres, Jen brings you back down and like makes it really consumable and really simple. So I just wanted to share her with you. So Jen, thank you so much 
for being on the content create content creation made easy podcast. Like, it's not easy <laughs> to say that, apparently. What's the <laughs> podcast called? Um, yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Jen. This was really a lot of fun. Can you tell us what is there one more thing that people don't know that they should know? Is there one more little gem that I forgot to ask? <sighs> is there one more gem you forgot to ask? Uh, you did a really good job with all of your questions. I guess. Um, I guess, no, I cannot think right. of a single thing. <laughs> uh, when we hang up, I'll think of it. Of I'll course, think of five course. things. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you so much.